presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport. In the show, Chevon Troutman and Matt Loyeski talk to us before their game of the week, which also produced the B-Win MVP of round eight. Big men Alexia Jassin and Georgia Gagic tell their stories. Blake Shield and Jamar Smith are set in the Euroleague alight with their shooting skills. And as always, we check out the top three plays of the week. Both come from the USA. Both are Turkish Airlines Euroleague rookies. Olympiakos Pirel shooting guard Matt Loyeski plays for the back-to-back -back reigning champions. FC Bayern Munich power forward Chevon Troutman plays for a team taking its first steps in the Euroleague. Matt is one of the greatest long-distance shooters of the league. That is no surprise to him. This year is I'm, I'm getting a lot of easy shots, you know, um, spotting up, um, got some playmakers that are that are finding me in rhythm, and uh, I started out good, so I got confidence in the beginning, and it's kind of just continued, you know. Chevon is not very tall, but he's a master in the paint. There is a secret to his success. I don't really use tricks, but uh, kind of, I guess I've been playing against uh, bigger people my whole life, so I, I came from playing the five to now playing the four, so it's a little bit easier when you're playing against the four that's not so big. You can kind of just like move them around, but basically a uh, body, body balance against, I use their, the weight. Loyeski came to Greece from Ostend, Belgium. Everything becomes easier if you are helped by the team and the way they play. The system was basically perfect for me, you know. Um, the team I played on before and the player that I am, I think fits really well with what we do at Olympiacos. We share the ball, we play as a team. On the other hand, Troutman knew the team at the start of this campaign. This is his third season in Bavaria, and he already knew his coach, the legendary Svetislav Pezic. He just likes to push his players to, to the max and, and keep them on their toes. So you could, you could be doing it correctly, and he'll still tell you to do it better, and you're doing it pretty good already. So, I mean, he's just demanding he wants you to, to be uh, always, always ready to get after and try to push, push harder than, you're, than you are at the moment. One more thing is shared by both. Their respective clubs also have top football teams. If the Reds are European champions in basketball, then the Germans reached the same title in football last May. It, it gives you a sort of a, a prestige, but you know, with the basketball side, you know, we're on the, we're on the way of, of earning our own prestige. The Audi Dome in Munich hosted the game of the week of round eight between FC Bayern and Olympiakos. Everyone was expecting an entertaining encounter and it lived up to its billing. Both Troutman and Loyeski did their job, but four players scored their career highs. Three for Bayern, Malcolm Delaney, 22 points. Michael Shafarczyk, 21, and John Bryant, 16. For the reigning champion, Stratos Perperoglu set a career high of 25 points coming off the bench. Olympiakos eventually reached their eighth consecutive win, 
Euroleague's highest scoring no overtime game in nine years, the sixth highest ever. Perperoglu may have been top scorer, but the best player was once again Vasilis Panoulis, the B-Win MVP of round eight. This is the first accolade of the season for the MVP of the last two final fours. Vasilis scored 24 points, shooting four for five two-pointers and four three-pointers of the seven he attempted, adding four for five free throws. The rebounds, the five fouls received and above all the seven assists helped him to reach a performance index rating of 29, just one more than his teammate Perperoglu. Gold medalist at the recent European Championships, Strasbourg's centre Alexia Jassin is also one of the highest scorers so far in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague. He is averaging 18.8 points per game and shooting with 59.4% from the field. A spectacular player with a remarkable basketball brain. Alexi dominates in the post position. Thanks to a big wingspan, 7'7", seven seven, he is a decisive player at both ends of the court. Basketball only came into his life after another of his great passions, cycling. It's a couple of videos on the, on the internet. You can see that I'm probably a one ahead of, above everybody. A passion that brought him a fair amount of success when he was younger. I think I won uh, three or four times a French championship, uh, two times a European championship, and a second award championship. And then I did a couple times, a couple more times, third, uh, third and a place in a world championship, and seventh place in a world championship. Despite this, it was easy to spot his enormous potential for basketball. But everyone around him was pushing him to cycle. My neighbors, when we were in France, um, they were like already inside the, the club, and then they were like biking all every day. So my sister was her best friend, so she decided to do it too, and then. My brother followed her, and then since I'm the last one, I started to follow too, so yeah, it was pretty cool, and that's what we would grow up in. At that time, Alexi was growing up too fast and was too tall for his bike. At the age of nine, he was 1.82 metres tall. It started getting bigger, so I was getting uh, the grown-ups' bikes instead of getting like the, the, the bikes for my age. It was pretty funny. And so it became impossible for him to ignore the sport where big men dominate. I started around 11 and uh, I was just doing the practice and uh, I didn't do no games, nothing, nothing at all, just doing practice and uh, I decided one time I have to do, uh, make a choice uh, between the three sports and I decided to just stay with the basketball. Last year, he saw his old biking rivals on TV in the London Olympics and was a little astonished. When I was used to be uh, in there, and I was racing against them and I was winning all the time. And then I see them in the, the Olympics being that good. It's, it's really like impressive uh, how good has they become and, and how far they went. However, he has no regrets. I'm, going to, I'm just going to do the same thing with basketball. It's even harder. This week, Strasbourg hosted Zalgiris Kaunas in a very close game in Group B. Ajansa contributed with 10 points on the night. 
With just seconds left to play, the score was tied. Justin Dentman nearly stole the show with an off-balance jumper with 2.4 seconds left. But Strasbourg still had a timeout. Louis Campbell scored a buzzer-beating three-pointer to make the final score 77-76 for the hosts. It's the second win in this regular season for the French team. Partizan Nis Belgrade and head coach Dusko Vujovic are famous for bringing through big men. The long list includes Vlade Divac and Dejan Tomasevic. Nenad Kirstic. Nikola Pekovic. Alex Maric. Dejan Milojevic and Kosta Perovic, all of whom won the highest accolades in their careers. Just being chosen by Partizan to be coached is a privilege for any big man, as Georgia Gagic is fully aware. It's a very good feeling and an honor to be approached by such a big club with such a big history and tradition. I didn't think too long about it when I needed to make a decision. Also because Dusko Vujosevic is a great coach who works a lot with players in my position. That was definitely a key reason why I came here. And of course to play Euroleague, one of the best competitions in basketball, was also an important reason. An honor, but also a lot of hard work. We did work a lot in individual and team practices. But besides the individual progress, what I gained the most was self-confidence and experience. Those are the things that will contribute the most in the next period of my life. The work during the week is fundamental but it's only a first step. At the moment, I'm just thinking about hard practices and healthy competition between the players. That's what motivates us to make each other better at basketball. Everything is unique in Belgrade. The team, the coach, the arena. And of course, the fans. Just playing for Partizan is already enough motivation in itself. You're constantly thinking of getting good results just for the fans, because they always help us. Last season they got behind us when we were young and we needed them. They were with us in triumph and defeat. Besides that, whenever one of us was having problems on the court, we had a superb instructor and psychologist in our coach. He was there to assist any of us through many conversations and to help bring up the players back into shape. Gagic and his teammates showed good form on Thursday night against Budivelnik Kiev. The Serbians took the lead in the first period with Joffrey Lovern, who was top scorer overall with 18 points. It was Gagic who gave his team the biggest lead before half-time, which ended 42-27. The basket by Terence Kinsey and the dunk again by Lovern practically ended any hopes for the Ukrainian team. The final score was 76-61.
so Partizan produced their second victory of the season and can still hope of qualifying for the top 16. Blake Shield definitely stands out for a player that made his EuroLeague debut later on in his career, but who instantly made a big impact. The Kervena Zvezda Telecom Bell grade guard made his debut in this competition last year with Alain Chalon sur Saon, an achievement earned on the field. To build a team uh, after a championship and be able to take the team that you won with and to be able to go into the EuroLeague with this team, uh, I think was the most exciting. Um, you know, it was a very trying period for, for the team, but uh, I think we had fun with it overall. I felt like I've put a lot of hard work in and to be able to play at that level, it was an honor. And, um, you know, to be able to go out every night and stay healthy and, and perform at that top level, a lot, a lot of players dream of this. Over 15 points per game in his first season, he was also the B-Win MVP of Round 9, and once again his performances so far have marked him out. Numbers that derive from his great versatility. It's just uh, the, the way I've grown up, my habits in the game. I've always been taught growing up, you know, with my, by my family, my father, my friends, my teammates, you know, to be a player, uh, not just want to be a shooter or, or dribble or, or one, one particular area, but to try to be a full player and, and understand the game. Despite his late start in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague, he is almost 30. He is already one of the most experienced players in the team. Coached by Dejan Radonic. This is a group of young guys uh, on this team, so now I'm a veteran, and they look at me as one of the older guys on the team. Uh, I, I can't quite digest that all the way yet because I, I don't feel old, but um, you know, to be a leader, uh, it's always an honor. And for a leader like him, the goal is always the same to just keep progressing every day uh, in practice and, and on the court, uh, building chemistry with each other, uh, with the coaching staff, um, you know, buying into their philosophy and, and just staying focused. Kervena Zvezda Telecom Belgrade's last hope of reaching the top 16 depended on the round 8 away match against Panathinaikos Athens. James Gist was unstoppable in the paint for the home side, and in the end, Panathinaikos were just too good and won 69-63. we move to Broza Baskets Bamberg to meet their new shooting guard. Twenty-six-year-old American Jamar Smith has proven he can live up to expectations. After making steady progress from his start in the College of Southern Indiana to now playing in the EuroLeague. Um, I feel blessed about it, you know, um, playing, you know, every year having to prove yourself and at the same time, you know, advancing in my career every year playing on a higher and higher level, higher stage, you know, I, I appreciate it. I think it um, speaks on my hard work and the teams that I've been on. So, you know, hopefully I keep going up. His immense determination to be one of the main assets of the team matches his pride at being able to play at the highest level in Europe. 
even my teammates now, you know, the Euro League is the best competition in Europe. So I'm looking forward to playing in it. I think, you know, any player want to play on the highest stage they can. And, you know, Euro League being the most competitive league in Europe, you know, I'm. Jamar's regular season has been very positive so far. His highest score came in the first round with 19 points against Strasbourg. Overall, in five of the first seven matches, he finished in double digits for points. He is shooting from the distance with an excellent 52.5%. Jamar is definitely one of the key performers of Broza's season. I want to definitely play a big role on the team and have an impact on, you know, the success that we have in EuroLeague and, you know, for other teams in the EuroLeague to see that, you know, I'm, I'm a EuroLeague guard, you know, that's, that's my goal. In Bamberg, Jamar Smith was pleasantly surprised by the kind and very competent crowd who immediately recognised his talent and made him feel at home. Man, I've met more fans in Bomberg than I have anywhere I've been. The first day I came here, I went to the grocery store and like five people in the grocery store are like, hey, we in Freak City, you know, we glad to have you. Jamal was the hero in round eight in the Abdi Pechki Arena of Istanbul, home to Anadolu FS. The home side took a big lead before the break. They were up by 14 points at one stage, but then went on to concede a partial run of 4-20, which launched the guests to victory. The final score was 78-89. Jamal Smith was the top scorer of the match with an excellent four from five from long distance for 18 points, the same as Costas Vasiliadis for the hosts. This was the second win of the season for Broza Baskets against Anadolu FS, and the German club are now on a 3-5 record. And now let's take a look at the top three plays of the week. Number three, Moscow, Russia. End of the third quarter. Ceska's Vladimir Michov measures his shot from across half court and hits nothing but net to beat the buzzer for a remarkable triple. Number two, Munich, Germany. Malcolm Delaney skies for a fast break rejection of AC Law's shot that sends Heiko Shafatzik the other way for a killer three to thrill FC Bayern Munich's crowd, although ultimately it wasn't enough to beat Olympiakos. Number one, Strasbourg, France. 2.4 seconds left. Lewis Campbell inbounds, gets the ball back and banks the game-winning three-pointer to let Strasbourg keep fighting for the top 16. Two of the most titled teams of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague will face off in the next game of the week. Seska Moscow and FC Barcelona. The six-time EuroLeague champs of Seska Moscow and the two-time champions of FC Barcelona never met in a title game, but have faced each other four times in the semi-final since the beginning of the century. In three of these occasions, the winners were eventually crowned champions two days later. It happened in 2003, when FC Barcelona won 76-71, behind 21 points from Gregor Fuchka. In 2006, when Seska Moscow took an 84-75 victory, paced by 19 points apiece, posted by J.R. Holden and Theo Papalukas. And again in 2010, when FC Barcelona won the semi-final 64-54, with Fran Vazquez as main contributor with 11 points. Their last challenge was at the Final Four last May in London, when in the game for third place, 
Aaron Jackson scored from the foul line, giving the Russian side a 74-73 win. Juan Carlos Navarro had 20 points in a 79-70 success for Barcelona this season in round four, and Marcelinho Huertas bagged 16 in victory, while Seska had 14 from Vladimir Mitsov and 11 from Jeremy Pargo. Many of the superstars on show are ready to write another chapter of one of the most intriguing challenges of the Turkish Airlines Euroleague on Thursday night when in the Russian capital, Seska Moscow and FC Barcelona will meet in the next game of the week. Presented by Turkish Airlines, Spalding, and Intersport.